Hey guys, I'm back again talking about periods. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without a period video to watch or step two. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I have been slacking. I've been slacking um, and I know that it is no excuse to leave you guys without these wonderful informative period videos. However, comma, I started a business, Moon Honey Doula. I completed my doula certification a little over a year ago, and I have been spending most of my time doing that. And so my personal blog and my period videos have kind of fallen by the wayside, and I will try my best to be more consistent with my period-related content, because I love talking about the menses. Very sexy, I know. Okay, so today, I am coming to you with a couple of things that I do while I'm on my cycle to make my cycle more bearable. Now, I'm gonna plug this really awesome book slash podcast slash woman, um, Lisa Henderson Jack, who is the creator of Fertility Friday. She has a Facebook group, she has a website, she has a podcast, and she has recently released a book called The Fifth vital sign which I absolutely love it supports the notion that your menstrual cycle is a vital sign so along with the other four signs um, that, that we look at to make sure that we're in good health your menstrual cycle is also a vital sign and we just don't talk about it enough which is why I'm gonna try to be more consistent since I have discovered fertility Friday I have started charting um, I don't use the same charting method that she does but um, I have started charting and it's amazing what, what your chart can reveal to you about your lifestyle. Um, and it, and it's, it really puts in perspective what it looks like if you don't get enough sleep or if you don't eat properly, if you're dehydrated, you know, and all of those things affect your cycle. And when I say cycle, I don't necessarily mean your menses, which is the portion of your cycle where you're bleeding. I mean your entire cycle. Um, it's time for us to get informed, stay informed, um, and when we get informed, it's our responsibility to inform another. And so um, I want to share with you guys that I just recently found out that I am struggling with estrogen dominance. That means that my body is producing too much estrogen, which throws my progesterone out of whack, which means I'm not producing enough progesterone. Now, progesterone is in the most basic of terms, pro just so when you're pregnant we call that gestation um, and so pro is like we're rooting for you and so if I don't produce enough progesterone that means that I can get pregnant but I might have issues staying pregnant um, and it is October it is pregnancy and infant loss awareness month what I'm sure I'm speaking for a lot of women when I say that if there's something that is in my control, I want to do everything I can to make sure that my body is doing what it needs to do, that I'm in good health and that my babies are healthy. So saying all that to say, talking about periods can be really uncomfortable. Talking about your cycle can be uncomfortable, but it's something that we do every month. And if you're not doing it, we need to be talking about that. So check out the podcast, check out the website, check out her book. It's available on ebook and audiobook now. Um, and I, it, it, it's worth the conversation. I would love to get to the point where we talk about menstrual cycles, cycle cycles, moon cycles, whatever you want to call them, so regularly that a little girl grows up, you know, and she's not afraid of it. So that was my little tidbit. We're gonna get into the good stuff. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be talking to you about some period hacks. What's a period hack, Sierra? A period hack, or a hack, I guess I should say, is something, it's like a shortcut. It's like a, it's, it's like a tip, a trick, you know? Something that makes you go, aha, that worked. So, I've got a couple of things that I just can't live without. Like, if I'm on my cycle and these things are, aren't available to me or I'm not able to do these things, then I'm not a happy camper. It wasn't until I was in high school that I figured out 
because I was on my period that I had a chair that my trillion and bloomers were so tight that they just kept everything in place and that's important because leakage because who wants their pad to be moving left and right when they're moving about their day um, and so I make it a point to wear tight shorts cheerleading bloomers spandex some something like that when I'm on my cycle <clears throat> to keep everything in place it is a game changer even if I'm doing just my cup and a panty liner I still want that support something about the squeeze keeps everything in place it makes me feel really comfortable and warm and it also puts pressure on my um, lower abdomen which could all could all be in my head who knows really makes me feel supported um, you know through my bloating through my cramping all that kind of good stuff so trillion bloomers now to double that I also wear tight pants bikini bottoms um, I'm sure you've heard about this hack, but if you are somebody who suffers from leakage, or if you're like me, where on the second day of your cycle, which is also the heaviest day of your cycle, you get the best sleep of your life, I don't, guys, I sleep so well, so very well when I am bleeding heavily. Something about that uterus contracting and the blood flowing makes me go, and it's like the best sleep ever. And I have to literally force myself to get up in the middle of the night because I can't sleep sleep through the night on my heavy night with my cup. Even if I have my cup and a pad, I'm not gonna make it through the whole night. I have to get up. Um, and so I have to literally like say, Sierra, I know this feels really good right now. I know the sleep is just beyond euphoric and you don't wanna move, but you must get up, you must. Now, most of the time that works, but sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes I wake up and the sun is up. And guess what happens? I leak. My cup is overflowed. My pad is like, I've had enough. And I leak. I don't like throwing away underwear. I don't, but I also don't like blood stained underwear. So if you wear bikini bottoms while you are sleeping, or if you have a heavy floor and you wanna wear them throughout the day, super, super, super easy to clean. Run some water on it. Get a little soap, do this motion with the fabric, throw them in the washing machine, and you have good as new bikini bottoms. Something about the material just makes the world go round. One day, one day, I, you know what guys? Mark my words. I'm gonna come out with a period panty line. Not like a fix or anything, like you can still wear your cups and pads, but I'm just come out with a period panty line where like these are my period panties. Don't steal my idea. Actually, you can, because you know what? The bread aisle, it's enough room for all of us. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, baby wipes. So, um, full disclosure, and I'm not ashamed. So if you're watching this, which, guys, there actually are quite a few men that watch my videos, and it makes me so happy. Um, if you're watching this, and you've never experienced this, or you are a man, and um, this might catch you off guard, I don't care, get over it. Um, the way our anatomy is set up, we have a lot of creases and crevices. And you know, the way the, the, way the menstrual blood is set up, the, the, the nice syrupy uh, texture that leaves our body once a month, it gets in those crevices. And you're like, how? How, because I know I wiped it. Um, sometimes you need to need a little moisture, a little moisture. Definitely go organic, definitely go um, dioxin free, chlorine free. Um, they are readily available now. This is a different time from my very first period video. And you get those crevices. You get those crevices, girl. Get all up in there. And don't forget the backside. Because somehow, because somehow, even if I have my cup in, <laughs> even if I have my cup in, somehow, somehow the blood just gets all the way to the back, all the way up at the top. I don't know if that's an anatomy thing. I don't know if this is the way my body is made. I don't know if like, some of, you, some of you are out there like, Sierra, what? That never happens to me. But it happens to me, okay? It gets all up in the crevices. Baby wipes are my friend. Moving on. Bath oils. Taking a bath on your period is something that some people don't like to do. Um, some people consider it to be dangerous because, you know, sitting, being submerged in water does stop your flow. Um, but if you wear a tampon or you wear a cup, I say you're good to go. I mean, you know, 
there are athletic swimmers out there. The swimming keeps swimming when they're on their cycles. So, peppermint, lavender, eucalyptus are my friends. Run a bath, especially if you have back pain. I do suffer from back pain. I'm not a huge cramper. I don't cramp very often, but I do have back pain. Um, so, run your bath. Make sure it's nice and hot. Turn on your candles. I say seven to eight drops of each. I usually go a little heavy on the peppermint because you can feel the like, between the peppermint and the eucalyptus, I think. You can feel the menthol sensation that like, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like if you have like shampoo that has tea tree oil in it and then like your scalp is all like tantalizing, you can feel that. Like I feel it on my lower back. I feel it on, on my lady parts. Everything just feels nice and like that. Um, so yes, bath oils. Take a bath, drop some essential oils in there. Make sure you're buying sustainably sourced essential oils um, because there are a lot of fake oils out there. There aren't enough, there isn't enough regulation on essential oils. So do a little research, find some good ones. Heating pad. My heating pad is my friend. Me and my heating pad go way, way, way back. Um, I usually, honestly, I use it for my back more than I do for my stomach. And I'll be honest, you know how there's that like warning on there that says like, don't sleep with your heating pad. Really hard, it's really hard, it's hard because it's warm. It's warm and it feels nice. Um, and so it puts me to sleep. And then of course my energy on my cycle is already low. So I'm like, oh, it's nice. Imagine someone massaging my temples and the next thing you know, I'm out. Um, but luckily I have one that has an auto timer. So you can do 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. It automatically cuts off, which I'm sure is preventing house fires everywhere. Um, and if you are someone that just wants to go super old school, get a hot water bottle. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that look like a whoopee cushion, fill it up with hot water, boil the water, fill it up with hot water. Get a funnel or if you have like a kettle that you can pour into it. Um, please don't burn your hands. I have been burned by hot water. It is not fun. And yes, it left a mark. It looks like I got my appendix taken out on my abdomen. Um, so yes, hot water in the bottle, screw the cap on really tight. They have those really cute little sweater things, like a sweater for your hot water bottle. And, um, you can do it that way. And those actually stay hot for quite, quite a while. Um, and they travel and you don't need electricity. So if you're on a road trip or on a plane or whatever, well, you can't take hot water on the plane, but you can ask for hot water when you get there. So yes, the heating pad is my friend <laughs> and they said i couldn't sing reusable pads there is just something about taking my cup out like the cup yes it is a natural method in that it doesn't have any harmful chemicals in it but putting something in your vagina is not natural unless it is meant to go there like a penis um, and I'm not being dirty. Penises are actually meant to go in vaginas. Grow up, guys. Um, so you really shouldn't be putting things in your vagina, but because it is with, made with medical grade silicone, um, it's toxin free, the side effects are little to none. Um, and so sometimes the vagina is just like, get that thing out of me. I don't want it there. And so when that happens, it's usually like a frustrating 10 minutes of me trying to put my cup in and me just be like, you know what? Obviously my body is not feeling this right now my reusable pads they're soft and they're warm and they are like the quiet storm why because they're made of this really nice like bamboo stuff and it's like kind of fleece ish and I've talked about my, my pads before they're by Morty and I'm really sad because I only have three of them um, well three of the ones that I like I have plenty of pads I've gone through lots of brands but three of the ones that I like and the, the Amazon link that I use is no longer there so I don't know I, I don't know what happened there, but I can't find these bags anymore. I love them. Absolutely love them. Um, <clears throat> don't think I've ever had a leak. Ah, ironically, I did have a leak with my pad one time. It was on my very last day, and I was like barely bleeding. And I literally was like sitting up like this. And I think I had my knees to my chest because, you know, you, you get to the end of your cycle and you get real, real adventurous. You know, you just you start doing stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I did that and I went to the bathroom and I was like, what, how, how I'm barely even bleeding. And there was like this one little itty bitty line, just like, like somebody took a red marker and did like this, 
in my underwear. And so I was just like, this is annoying. But as far as my heavy flow, you'd be surprised how much it holds and it absorbs and it goes down to the under layer so that like when you go to the bathroom, you can pull your pants back up and you don't have to feel like that gross feeling. Like if you've ever gone to the bathroom, but like, and you, your pants are quite full. So it's like, you, you don't want to waste it. But then again, you don't want to put the cold blood back on you. I'm like that. I'm the kind of person like when I go to the bathroom, I have to change my pad. Because like it mentally I just can't do it. I cannot go to the bathroom, have a half used pad, and then put it back on. Like it just feels so wrong. No judgments though to those of you that can. My body just does not like it. Super easy to clean. I like to run it under cold water in the shower. I like to do that because less mess, easy cleanup in the shower. Something that I do is I, t I, t I like stand in the shower and I take my foot and I just like press so that I can like make sure I'm, you know, getting most of the um, previously absorbed fluid out and just kind of like press on it until the water runs clean. And then I pick it up, I wring it out, run it again and keep wringing it, wringing it out until it runs clean. Some people soak theirs in um, water which is effective but I just feel like I want to get it all out and then I'll toss it in the washing machine let it air dry it's amazing next on my list is massage mm. getting a massage on your cycle is something to be weary of because there you need to go to a masseuse that knows what they're doing or you need to get like an actual menstrual massage um, there are some people who believe you really shouldn't be having massages while you're on your cycle I'm sure there's a good reason for it I can't think of it right now but um, even if I get a massage right before my cycle, um, you know, or if I go to someone that knows what they're doing and they press all the right spots, oh my goodness, it feels good. Okay, look into the massages. Napping. I know, I know, I know, Sierra. I know, I know, I'm an adult. I know what you're thinking, I'm an adult. I have things to do, places to go and people to see. But I want to encourage you to slow down when you are on your cycle. If you have a fairly regular cycle, that means you can plan ahead. Um, and I know that we all have demanding jobs. And I know that the American way is to work until we die. Um, but let's consider for a moment that our bodies need us. Our bodies need us to be kind to them, to take care of them, and to listen to them. And when you are on your menstrual cycle, you are literally shedding yourself of um, you're shedding your, your your uterine lining. There, there are things that are leaving your body. And so that is extra work that you're not doing the rest of the month. And you need to get okay with slowing down, stopping, pausing, taking a break. Let's call it self-care. So when I am on my cycle, if I can help it, I have a bed day. Now I work for myself, so my schedule is a little more flexible, but if I can help it, I have a day where I just lay in my bed and I'm in and out of sleep and I'm eating all the things I want to eat and I'm watching TV and I read and then sometimes I talk on my phone and then I go back to sleep. Relax, rest, slow down. It's important. Next on my list, vino. Wine. So wine, um, it's different from other alcohol, and I'm speaking particularly about red wine because me and white wine just don't really get along. Um, but there's just something about being on, like being under the influence of red wine that just makes you like, hmm, hmm. It makes you like just like that, and it's like a it's a high, but it's also a low, and you get really mellow and you just get really chill. And it calms your nerves and I swear it alleviates my clamoride cramps. I swear it does. You can't tell me other, otherwise. And if you try to tell me otherwise, I'm just gonna go la la la, la 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 la, la 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 la. Love to have a nice glass of wine when I'm on my cycle. It does wonders. Next on my list, water. I put them together on purpose. Water into wine, you know, that whole thing that happened. Okay. So staying hydrated is important. As I said before, you're losing fluids. You're losing uh, things that are not necessarily fluids, but you're losing it in the form of fluid. And you need to stay hydrated. When I drink water, when I stay hydrated, I feel completely different 
from when I've allowed myself to be dehydrated. And we're not honest with ourselves about what dehydration looks like. Dehydration is not chapped lips and dry mouth. Dehydration is anytime you feel thirsty. If you've allowed your body to feel like, hmm, I need something to drink, you are already dehydrated. So please make sure you, you keep your water intake up. Um, before you even get 30 minutes into your day, like from the time that you wake up into 30 minutes, you should be having water, herbal tea, something. That the only tea that counts towards your water intake is herbal tea. Um, but just please make sure that you guys stay hydrated. Um, and that doesn't mean Gatorade or Powerade or whatever. Yes, those things do have electrolytes. Yes, they offer you hydration, but nothing is a replacement for water. Drink water, seriously. Stay hydrated, guys. Stay thirsty, my friends. Did you catch that reference? Don't stay thirsty. Don't listen to the Dos Equis guy. Um, last thing on my list is exercise and diet. So stay active um, and eat right, especially leading up to your period. If you're gonna cheat, the time to cheat is not leading up to your period. Cheat while you're on your period. Um, and I don't mean that you need to be on a diet. I just mean that you need to be mindful of your diet. Be mindful of all the things you're putting into your body. All of those things affect your body. But please, 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 I cannot stress enough how important it is to stay active. And guys, it doesn't have to be CrossFit. It doesn't have to be um, going to the gym. Walking is still exercise. We underestimate how effective walking is. Walking, taking the stairs, all those little things really, 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 really add up. So, that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about my period. You know how much I love to do that. And I hope that wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, you're having a fabulous day. And if you're not, let's make a decision right now to continue having a fabulous day, okay? Because it can be a choice, it can be. It starts from you, it starts from here. Spread love, spread joy, do something kind, give someone a hug, initiate some sort of physical affection we need that in our lives. And um, I know, coming from me, right? My friends that are watching this are like, what? <laughs> I love affection. I'm just not a touchy-feely person. Definitely not catching me off guard. Um, but yeah, do something great today. And something great can be something small. Small things can be great. Great things can come in small packages. All those other, I can't think of any more puns. Anyway, thank you for listening. Stay tuned. I will be more consistent. I promise. Love you guys. Bye.